All right, guys. So we'll welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. These are a great opportunity to sit back and check out a mature portfolio. In this video, we're going to jump into my six-figure taxable brokerage account and update you guys on some of the changes, uh, some of the holdings, specifically the dollar amounts and share amounts uh, of the holdings that we have. We roll these out to provide uh, an idea of what you could potentially build to in investing, what's possible. And I think for new investors out there to actually see what the end result looks like uh, before starting investing really can help understand what is possible in investing. So sit back, guys, and enjoy the review. So this is a joint taxable account that I have. It uh, supplements my other two retirement accounts. Um, this gives me some opportunity to invest when I want, how I want, and not necessarily be restricted by the annual caps that are presented by the Roth IRAs. This is uh, speaks to where I would um, say that the progression of an investor will go over time in that if you can max fund your Roth IRA uh, or your Roth IRAs, plural, then you can look to supplement your existing program with a brokerage account, but not until then. I think everybody should start with an individual retirement account. A Roth variety is my favorite, and that way you can really get yourself some tax, uh, some tax benefit built up in there uh, for the eventual um, time in your life when you reach that 59 and a half. But if you're really looking to accelerate your wealth building program, you could then de definitely look at layering on with some brokerage accounts. This is one of three that I have. This is the larger of the three. Um, but I thought you guys would uh, appreciate what I have going on in this account here in way of Putting some cash to the side, there's always been, there's obviously been some very big liquidations in this account. Um, this is about a 60-40 split here, and um, I, I've got a, a very, very large amount in cash here, about 40% of this, so about 40 grand and about 60,000 in, in equity here. So my bullish thesis on the market is has has dwindled a little bit. Um, my thesis is such that we're in for a little bit of rough patch going into 2021, and my investment uh, portfolio reflects that cautiously optimistic approach. If I'm wrong, no big deal. I keep enough exposure to the market uh, to enjoy some of that appreciation, but if we do enter, enter into some of that uh, um, volatility, we enter into maybe a nice correction or even a bear market. Uh, next year, I'll be prepared to uh, reintroduce some capital to the market uh, when and if that happens. Uh, so we've liquidated big tech. That's the big thing for this. Apple is sold off. Um, I went ahead and took the profits in Apple and Microsoft both. So you'll see those liquidated amounts here reflected in the brokerage account. I've also liquidated my position in Bank of America on the run-up. Uh, we sold uh, at around $27.50 in that name. So we took some pretty good profits and financials. So you'll see that there here, as well as the next two holdings in Bristol-Myers and CVS. Uh, CVS, I sold a little bit premature, missed out on some profit, but was able to render some very good profit uh, in the name as well as Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, fairly bullish on both names. I just think in this particular case, I wasn't satisfied with my what I considered to be over levered position to the market. Wanted to take some risk off the table, and uh, we did so in those names and took profits, of course, in in all in all those cases. Duke was an interesting position. I was able to render a very nice profit after taking Duke Energy into some deep water. I averaged down in the position and um, had the position built up nice and heavy, reestablished the position on that heavy down day that we had. So just a very, very simple channeling 
uh, uh, swing trading example in Duke Energy where I wanted to reestablish the position but not so large. And as I monitor the market and if it does in fact get drugged down uh, in accordance with the thesis that I have that the stock market is trading around some very healthy valuations now and holding at all-time highs, if it does end up uh, retracing on us, then we can go ahead and embolden that position going forward. General Dynamics is a long holding of mine in the defensive space. It's one of two holdings that I have in the space. In this portfolio, Lockheed Martin being the, the, the second. This actually is one of my top 10 holdings, actually. A 20-share position in Lockheed Martin is a relatively large position. It's just shy of 3% to the portfolio, so that speaks to my my bullish thesis on Lockheed. Uh, General Dynamics has, has been a fairly interesting disappointment for me, uh, and Raytheon Technology kinds of, kind of rounds out my defense sector. Uh, subsector of industrials. So um, we'll just continue to hold the stock long. I'm not worried one bit about it. It's a nice dividend paying company, um, but just over 7,500 in the name at 20 shares of Lockheed and General Dynamics, a 25 share position there. So some fairly large positions uh, relative to the total overall portfolio, and they fit nicely here. They really do. And they give me that nice mix of dividend paying companies um, with the strategic. Um, uh, exposure to um, some speculation play here. We'll cover that next, uh, as well as my attempt to enter back into some passive starting positions and some of my favorite ETFs here. So some cool stuff going on here. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm relieved a little bit to have put some cash to the side in this account. I feel better about this. Uh, but uh, still holding long on some of my good dividend-paying companies. IBM is the one stock that um, I've bought in two strategic places, and uh, this is the second of the two positions at 25 shares here. Not entirely too large, but um, uh, IBM is, is one of those that I don't mind holding to take the 5% dividend, and uh, we'll continue to monitor and be an investor in the company. Uh, Altria Group, ticker symbol MO. This is a um, relatively nice, healthy position at just over 100 shares in Altria Group. Again, going after that dividend yield in this uh, particular uh, account, and, and we're happy to own, own Altria Group in this portfolio. SMPRU, I spoke about this a little bit on the live stream. And for you guys that are on, new to the channel, I do roll out these updates weekly. Uh, on the Friday live stream that I hold. Uh, and um, so you guys can keep pulsed in on the progress of this portfolio um, as changes happen. But we do have the corporate action uh, on SMPRU to go ahead and split these warrants as separate units and, and retain the share base. That was a no cost uh, call to the broker, very, very simple. And they're, they'll break off those 150 shares that I'm due into a separate equity holding in SMPRU. And I'm excited to see this is a kind of a speculation play. Um, so it, I'm just kind of holding this and monitoring what uh, Tortoise Acquisition Group does um, with their second um, EV play that they're going after. Um, it was a cool way to, um, to, to kind of piggyback off of um, what I felt like was a, a, a very keen group and identifying opportunity in the space. And we'll see in, uh, what, what they turn out here as far as their second offering um, uh, with, their, with their second SPAC opportunity. Uh, Southern Company, same idea, channeled the stock, took fat profit, rolled back in at a lighter position here at 50 shares. This is a starting position that we'll look to back, build back on. Uh, as we embolden this brokerage account. AT&T is actually one of those that I actually bought more in. So an average down in AT&T uh, puts this in one of the, my top 10 holdings. Uh, this is a big one, so over 300 shares, nice dividend yield, nice entry on the stock. Went ahead and added another 100 share block to AT&T here to bring us just shy of $9,000, total dollars, 300 in the position. And then finally, I'm very, very excited this is a position that I want to build upon going forward, a nice starting position in my absolute favorite equity position out there, and that is Vanguard's Total Market ETF. It is my absolute favorite. I know a lot of people like VTSAX, which is the index equivalent to VTI. I prefer VTI. You're paying a, a, 
a, a, a little bit less in expense to hold this, which is um, interesting enough because my study of these two products put side by side have determined that there is in fact no difference whatsoever. Um, it's just the aesthetics of how the product is pushed forward and made available to uh, investors. And I would just rather take the, the uh, uh, freedom and flexibility, the ETF, uh, forego the transaction fee that is, um, is uh, subject to owning uh, VTSAX on the index fund side. Uh, and I'd just rather own VTI. So we're going to build upon this position. And this is a cool drop point for money. This gives me the ability to contribute to this when I want and how I want in whatever amount I want. In other words, if I see a small, a big drawdown in the market, uh, there's nothing keeping me from taking and just doubling up this position multiple times going forward. So give you some insight and some of the strategic uh, thoughts behind some of these, why I own the speculation, why I own the dividend growth, and why I own the passive investing blocks that I do in this portfolio to complement the total uh, comprehensive portfolio that we have in the other accounts. So hope you guys enjoyed this review of the joint brokerage account. We'll kick it back to YouTube to conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the taxable joint brokerage review. Hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, if you do enjoy the content coming through the channel, want to make sure and subscribe, help us support the message that we're putting through. You want to leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share this with anybody out there that you know may be interested in getting involved uh, in the markets uh, and looking for a general awareness channel on how to build wealth uh, for individuals uh, in the stock market. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.